Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors just won arguably their most meaningful championship, and from the looks of it, they're on pace to win more and more and create one of the most dominant dynasties the NBA has ever seen. LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, none of these guys can stop the Warriors in their impending dynasty. But if there's one person that could, it's uh, the tax man. The Warriors have a luxury tax problem. I mean, Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole were probably already giving Warriors ownership a headache when they said, Hey, you about to get a bag. Hey, you about to get a bag. You about to get a bag. We about to get a bag. Then, uh, in the middle of solving that issue, headaches like this came up. Sheesh. Everybody wants a bag these days. Which begs the question, where's my bag? <laughs> As of today, this is the Warriors' complete payroll for 2023. There are 13 players signed on to the 2023 Warriors payroll, which comes out to a grand total of about $187 million. The salary cap limit for teams is set at about $123 million. So, in addition to paying the players, the Warriors will have a luxury tax bill of about $158 million, which puts them at a grand total of approximately $345 million. The luxury tax they're paying is about just as much as they're paying their players, and this is exactly why they couldn't keep the whole championship team together. I mean, if they had kept both GP2 and Otto Porter Jr., their luxury tax would have exceeded their payroll. Here's what I mean. To pay those two the combined salary of $14 million, the Warriors as a franchise would have to shell out over $50 million in luxury tax, which would have put them over the $400 million range, which Joe Lacob has repeatedly said is not even remotely possible. Obviously, there's no way around this. I mean, Joe Lacob even tried to voice out his opinion on how it's unfair to tax teams based on players they've developed like Steph, Clay, Draymond, Poole, Looney, but all he received from the league was a $500,000 fine. That's pretty harsh. I wonder if Adam Silver hates him or something. <laughs> anyway, for the 2023 season, the Warriors are completely fine. They have the bulk of their championship core intact, along with a host of role players who can fill in the holes left by all the Warriors who left in the offseason. But where things get a little tricky is the following season in 2024, and here's why. The Warriors championship core currently consists of Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Kevon Looney, Draymond Green, Jordan Poole, and Andrew Wiggins. The first of these players are at least locked in through 2024, but the latter three either have a player option or will become unrestricted and restricted free agents. And the thing is, they're all probably looking for max contracts. If that were to happen, the Warriors would be paying well north of $500 million in both contracts and luxury tax. And uh, as much as Joe Lacob wants to stay competitive and win, that's just not possible. Which begs the billion dollar question, what should the Golden State Warriors do? Well, let's start with Draymond here first. First off here, he's part of arguably the greatest trio the NBA has ever seen, and letting him go because of a contract dispute would hurt the heart and soul of the Warriors. Multiple sources have said that Steph Curry would be really unhappy if the team lost Draymond Green because they didn't want to pay him, and that Curry sees them three as a package deal. In saying that though, let's be real and look at this objectively. Draymond's 32 currently and a max contract would pay him $164 million over five years, until he's like 37. A 2017 version of Draymond Green, when he was in his prime, is definitely worth whatever the max contract is. But the thing is, his age and style of play doesn't really mix well when we're talking about big sums of money. If we think of players similar to Draymond, we'd probably get players like Meta World Peace, Tony Allen, and Ben Wallace. You know, defensive stouts who are masters of their craft. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at how they performed with respect to age. To illustrate the picture, I found this graph here online. On the x-axis is games played, and on the y-axis is an advanced basketball statistic called DARCO, or DPM, which measures a player's value on the court. As you can see, 
After 600 games, all these former defensive stars' DPM values started dropping, and after 900 games, it started falling off a cliff. As of today, Draymond has played in 685 regular season games and 145 playoff games, which comes out to a grand total of 830. Yikes. I know stats are only stats, but according to the DPM graph we just looked at, paying a max contract to an aging 32-year-old defensive player who can't really shoot might end up biting the Warriors dynasty in the rear end, even if Steph Curry said what he said. For now, the Warriors should just see how the 2023 season plays out and deal with Draymond's contract situation once they win the 2023 championship. I do think they should keep Draymond, though, and pay him fairly, but a max contract is just tough. But uh, on the bright side of this negotiation, I highly doubt any other teams in the league are going to want to pay a 33-year-old defensive specialist a max contract, especially if they get to see the graph that we just looked at. <laughs> Anyway, next off here, we have the conundrum of Poole and Wiggins. Wiggins was clearly the second best player in the NBA Finals, who was also tasked with guarding the opponent's best player, while Poole, on the other hand, brought the pool party. Both of them are on an expiring contract, so after 2023, Wiggins will be an unrestricted free agent, while Poole will become a restricted free agent. As we saw earlier, they're both happily looking for a bag and I doubt either of them would be willing to take a massive paycheck to stay together because, well, money is money. And with that being said, there's simply no way to keep both of them if the Warriors want to keep their total expenses lower than $400 million. Now, the question is, what should the Warriors do with these two ballers who both played a significant part in the 2022 championship run? Honestly, again, the Warriors should just wait to see how the 2023 season plays out. We're all prisoners of the moment, and as of this moment, Wiggins is clearly the better choice because of his ability to play both ends of the floor, but if Jordan Poole has another breakout year where he becomes even more like Steph and starts playing at an all-star level, then uh, Bob Myers is going to have a tough decision to make. He might even have to just flip a coin, unless Kaminga develops. Now, here's where things get a little bit more interesting. If Kaminga somehow develops into a rising star in the league, like Anthony Edwards did in his second season, and if Kaminga starts showing the ability to knock down threes and play stellar defense, then it'd be a no-brainer to keep Poole. I'd hate to see Wiggins leave, but dang, at least he'll be a two-time champion. Anyway, speaking of Kaminga earlier, the best way for the Warriors to extend their dynasty while dealing with all the salary cap issues is by developing their young guns. Kaminga, Wiseman, Moody, Baldwin Jr., Santos, Rollins. How long the Warriors can keep this dynasty together is going to rest on the shoulders of these young players. If these guys can all develop at the same rate that Jordan Poole developed at, then there'd be no problems going forward because there'd always be a few great young players who are on rookie contracts mixed in with the veterans who are on max contracts. But, uh, Another interesting route that the Warriors could possibly take is if they followed the footsteps of the San Antonio Spurs and took pay cuts in order to keep the team together. But the only issue here is, Steph Curry is already signed onto a contract that pays him like 50 million a year for the next four seasons. Clay, on the other hand, his contract is set to expire in two years when he turns 34. He'll still be an amazing player because of his marksmanship, and will probably still be able to earn a pretty penny in the NBA marketplace. So the question then is, is he going to try and get a max contract or would he take the silver bullet for the Warriors? Honestly, for me, all these contract issues that are one, two, three years away are pretty mind boggling and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. So the truth is the best course of action currently for the Warriors and their salary problem is to dominate the 2023 season and see how things unfold. And speaking of seeing how things unfold, if you want to see how trash talking goes wrong unfolds, then you know where to find me.